while singing before a queen. Maria Callas has put her stamp so much on this opera that I think that there are some things that you just have to aspire to do. And whether I do it well or not, I like to aspire to do what she did. That, for me, is the epitome of prima donna, Maria Callas. Do you enjoy being a prima donna? Of course I do. Why not? <laughs> Why not? I work Absolutely. very hard for it. But it's not something that, I'm, that, I'm, that, I, no. that I work towards. I work towards doing a very good job. I work towards, I work towards satisfying an audience. Accomplishment. And if my audience is, is satisfied with what I've done, then I'm pleased. I really didn't want to sing opera at first. I was at the Music Academy of the West in Santa Barbara studying with Lotta Lehman. Mm. And, uh, but I want, really wanted to study the art of recital. And it was she who insisted that I take also the operatic classes. And uh, after my first little entry into that, I was doing Amneris uh, in the Opera Aida, and I thought, gee, I like this. This is, <laughs> this is really quite something. And it was actually Lotte Lehmann really who, who got me started. And she in, inspired many, many, many young artists. So. Yeah. From Amneris as a student to Tosca at the Met in 10 years. And it was my first Tosca ever. My gosh, Grace, how brave. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, you know, I even did my very first, my very first uh, Salome. Mm -hmm. in Covent Garden. Uh, that was just a year before I did my, my Metropolitan uh, uh, Tosca debut. But the Bayreuth Venus. And the Opera Tannhäuser in Wagner's own opera house. That's really an extraordinary mm. debut to make. I mean, for a, a black singer, an American singer, to sing there in Bayreuth. So I, I didn't have the luxury of breaking in roles in Europe. You say luxury. One can look at it from a different point of view, yeah. too. I mean, you had the Metropolitan to do That's with true. it. You didn't have to go to Europe. Well, that's true. That's I true. had to go to Europe. I oh. think we Americans, we have, a, we have a lot of nerve. We, simply because we, we have, have to. This, as I said originally, it's a foreign media for us. Mm -hmm. and it's a foreign medium. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to do more than they do. For them, that's their tradition. And uh, I just think that in, if you really want to make a serious career and also an exciting career, you've got to take chances. My husband and I had this problem. He felt that I had to be a, a, a mezzo. I mean, and I felt that, listen, I can't force my boss to do one thing or the other. I go where it wants to go. And these two little things in here said to me, you have to follow the, the, yeah. the soprano way. And that's what I did. That's why the, our, our marriage split up. He insisted that I become, that I stay mezzo. And I insisted that I follow my vocal cords. And I think I would write. As we, as we can see, I've been singing now 12 years as a, as a, as a soprano, and it's been very, very successful, as you well know. in this profession is no great problem. Not really. Uh, once you've gotten your foot in your door, of course, and you have this great talent, etc., that's not the big problem. I think what we're, try what we're trying to go is being black, going back to this, to this early childhood in St. Louis, Missouri, etc. That's not easy, you see, because so many of your friends 
So many of your early friends don't really understand what you're about. Oft times, oftentimes they they tend to think you're putting on air. Um, I know I went through that through that period where they thought, oh, what she's speaking all these languages and she's being snooty, she's being arrogant, she's being, um, she, she's, you can't reach her, you know. But they fail to remember that Grace made certain sacrifices to get there. And those same sacrifices hold, th hold true and hold through, straight through till today. 